Hello everyone, my name is Brian Locke and you're looking at a stream where I'll be building an alarm clock. So this is the second part of uh, the stream. I'd say we'll have more than just this part as well. We have a good bit to get through. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a delay with the voice and the video, which doesn't look great. Hey Michael, hey. Fire Rider. Oh, perfect. I can hear myself back now. Let's turn that down for the minute, anyways. And change it over to my headphones. Um, okay. So I'm testing out streaming in 1080p. Um, I also got a new webcam for the, the me facing one. Uh, it's the one I showed a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I have that set up now, so let me know if there's any issues with uh, dropped frames or anything like that. So far it looks okay, but uh, we will see. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat, both on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, yep, so hopefully you can see it there. So yeah, hey Michael and hey Fire, and good to hear that the sound is okay. Um, hey Paul Rani, good to see you again. Um, yeah, let me just try fix the offset of the mic. Which way is it? Looks a bit slow. Hi, hi. Yeah. I never know what to do to fix this. If I'm going too fast or too slow, let's try to change this to something. See what happens. If that is worse or better, it looks worse. Let's try that. If that is worse or better, that probably looks better. Yeah, let me know if um, if the voice and the audio are too far off. Yeah, it, do it doesn't look right anyways. Um, yeah, for the new webcam, I am. Um, for the new webcam, I had to set up like new profiles on OBS, which is the software I use to stream. So, um, yeah, fun times. There might be some teething problems. I also don't have all my um, layouts done yet correctly, so I'll be creating some of them on the fly probably. Um, yeah, such as uh, you know, getting the chat up there and stuff like that um yeah okay cool let's uh let's get into it hey eric um thanks for joining um okay so let us show my screen which has nothing on it and let's load up the code from last week um yeah so just the first thing that we'll do in this stream is to just recap what we did in the last stream and I'm just going to move myself off the YouTube uh, YouTube preview screen because it's very off-putting. Um, yep, so far it looks like my internet's keeping up uh, with the 1080p. It's also streaming at a higher frame rate, I think, too. So it should be better quality all around, hopefully. Um, okay, so this is not... What I was doing last week, open recent uh, alarm clock. That is surely what I was doing. Um, I don't like the way I have two alarm clocks, but uh, I think this should be it. Anyways, uh, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, this looks pretty good. So, yeah, the first thing that we were doing was we used uh, the library NTP client to fetch the data from the internet. Um, so I'm just using the basic example of it here, but if you look through the library's advanced example, it shows you how to set an offset. Um, so you can set the clock for your, um, your time zone. I just happen to be in GMT at the moment until the last Sunday of March. Um, so at some stage in one of the streams, we'll, we'll um, take a look at solving that problem. I actually was having a quick look today um, and I did find uh, uh, a library um, 
by a guy called Jay Christensen. Um, that is for working with um, working with uh, daylight savings time in um, with Arduino. So you can set kind of rules that are um, like I mentioned that it's the last Sunday in March that the clocks uh, go forward in Ireland. Um, I'm pretty sure it's similar enough time for other people. Hey, Electronics Workshop, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. I'm not sure if you've been here before. I've have seen you on Eric's. Um, no, it's not Eric. It's on uh, Eric. Are you Make Me as well? Uh, I have seen you on Make Me's Discord, anyways. Um, so welcome along. Yeah. So this um, this lets you put in uh, you know on the last sun Sunday of March. I want you to change the change the thing forward or back or whatever so uh yeah that might be a nice solution to um to the daylight savings problem but at the moment uh if we look back at not just me just desk so that is actually the correct time in ireland it's a tiny bit bright for e i would say um i don't know if that makes it that makes it worse um maybe some maybe some masking tape will make it better um masking tape makes everything better yeah that looks pretty good actually oh no it looks perfect when <laughs> i'm covering it and then it looks terrible when i'm not covering it it looks great in person. I think it's just the brightness of the lights shining down on it. Now I've got masking tape glue all over my, uh, all over my um, seven segment. Yeah, you can you can kind of see it anyways. Maybe if I just move it over to a side. Yeah, close enough. You'll just have to trust me. It says twenty one thirty nine and it has a blinking, uh, blinking couple of stars. So it should be all good. Let me just make sure I have the chat on this one as well. Okie dokie. Right. I may as well get myself from there too. A bit of red electrical tape will help. That's interesting. Me. Oh, sorry. I know Make Me is uh, is also named Eric. So obviously there's more than one Eric in the world. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. There's a little bit of a shine, but yeah, it looks looks pretty sharp there. Let me just put a bit of blue tech underneath it to keep it. Uh, tilted at the side this blue text filthy but uh will do its job and there is make me hello so thanks for the suggestion michael that i think that looks pretty good um yep and just proving how messy my desk is again that i had a red insulating tape on it um okay cool so yeah, that's the that's <laughs> yeah um, that's the seven or sorry that's the code for the NTP. So it's really nothing to it. Um, it's just grabbing the time and then I'm converting the epoch time um, to hours and minutes using uh, this method here, display time, and then you know just splitting it into two separate digits and displaying that, and I'm turning on and I'm blinking the dots on and off which is the you know the two blinking dots that kind of indicate the time it's a little bit slow I would say blinking those dots so I might um might speed that up um 
Uh, so Pranrani was asking about platform IO. I have used it and I much prefer Atom than the Arduino IDE. Um, I haven't, I haven't adopt, adopted it as my main thing because when I'm making the videos or whatever, um, I don't see a scenario where I will be using platform IO as the main one. Um, just from, uh, just from, uh, you know, it might put some people off or whatever. While everybody, even if you're familiar with platform IO, will definitely be familiar with Arduino IDE as well. But yeah, I like you definitely miss IntelliSense and things like that. Arduino is a pretty basic, basic IDE, I would say. And uh, yeah, so then the other thing that we did was we pulled in this library, the TM1637 display, which is for this uh, seven segment. The seven segment is like 70 cent off AliExpress, so it's uh, pretty cheap. And as you can see, it only has four wires as well. So it looks after the multiplexing or whatever it needs to do um, there. And uh, yeah, so when we turn on this device, it displays boot. So I wrote, and, and it beeps, we'll get to that now in a second. Uh, I wrote out the, the letters for that, um, Manually, I did it for a different project, so I'm setting each segment. Um, I'm setting each segment um, individually, um, so they're they're defined in the library, the TM one six three seven display library, and uh, so seg A I think is this top one, uh, and then it goes around, and then the last one is the middle, so. Um, A is the top, B is the top right. I am looking at my code, but you're not. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this TM16, <laughs> it was funny. I was looking at the, <laughs> I was looking at the screen as well, just keeping an eye on the chat, but uh, I wasn't paying attention too much, obviously. Um, let me just pull in a video capture, Logitech desk. It's too big. Not too small. I'll hide this one. I don't need it. Um, so yeah, the the top one is a. Uh, the top yeah top uh, segment is a. One on the top right is b. One on the bottom right is c, and so on. So it goes around clockwise, and then the last one then is g. So that should be okay with that one. Let's get rid of him. And uh, yeah, so it displays boot on startup. Um, we are setting the brightness. I think I have it set to max brightness. So maybe that's why it's kind of hard to see on the screen. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, so I'm just setting the seg boot, which is just setting B O O and then what kind of looks like a T. I'm digital writing uh, the alarm to be low. And then I which just, you know, doesn't ring the buzzer. Um, and then I, you know, I connect to the Wi-Fi. The reason I've this uh, commented out here is because it remembers your last known uh, connected details. Uh, so off screen, I put in my SSID and password and uh, let it connect. And then I um, then, you know, brought it back on screen with this, uh, oops with these fake ones and uh, now when I've this commented out it will connect to the Wi-Fi even though there's no Wi-Fi begin it will connect to the Wi-Fi anyways so if you have uh, if you have an ESP8266 project where you don't want Wi-Fi you need to specifically turn the radio off I think it's called like uh, Wi-Fi mode dot no radio or, or something like that um, yeah uh, I think I say what to do in my five quirks of working with the ESP8266 video. So yeah, then we're just sounding the alarm and what the alarm sound is at the moment is just beeps high for a second. We can probably make that a little bit more like an alarm uh, later on, but it'll do for now. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So the loop, it just delays for a second, updates the time client if it needs to uh that's again that's part of the library we pulled in so we're not really doing anything here uh display time with dots on 
Uh, so dots on is a variable that we're just changing this every second. So that's uh, that's pretty much it what we did so far. So what I was thinking we might do in this stream is set up a web interface where we can set uh, an alarm time. So we can actually make this be an alarm clock rather than it just beeping on startup. Um, yeah, and then uh, I mentioned in the description as well, we'll probably need to give ourselves a way of turning off the alarm. Um, so for now, we'll just sound the alarm, we'll turn on the alarm for a second and then turn it off again. But you know, in the future, we'll want it to loop the alarm and then have some other uh, way, either a web interface button or a physical button on the alarm clock to turn it off. So yeah, that's where we are. If I need to explain anything in a little bit more detail, let me know, but um, cool. Let's move on to the web interface. So uh, I, what I normally do for my web interfaces is I use um, what do I use? I use a, a method that um, I talked about in a video called uh, string literals. Um, so if we go to my GitHub page, so basically what that does is it, um, what I do is I create a separate file and uh, put all the HTML code in that. And, um, and I use, um, C++ string literals. So basically anything inside this file is going to be considered um, our HTML code. So um, you don't need to escape anything or anything like that. So there's a lot of reasons why it's um, nice compared to like building up the string inside, uh, inside your sketch, which is a little bit messy. Like if we take a look at this simple Wi-Fi control car is going to have the string literal method. But then if we take a look at, I have a lot of libraries and code bits. Where are we? ESP remote example. Yeah, this guy. So here's an example of one that I don't really recommend doing anymore. So. Um, yeah, you can see I'm building up the, the string of the web page kind of line by line and appending it to this website, um, variable. Um, so I tried to give myself a couple of little helper methods to make it a little bit easier, but you know, you have to escape things. It's all a little bit slow and not that nice. And what I do recommend doing is. So I've created this motor page dot H and, um, so it has this or, um, or quotes open bracket is the, what's inside this is a string literal basically. So I don't need to escape anything. So this is like raw HTML without any, yeah, I, I know I'm repeating myself <laughs> without any escapes or anything. Um, so it means that like, if you have a, a HTML piece of code that works for you for a normal project or whatever, you can just paste it straight in here and it will work fine. So, um, yeah, I, I like this method. Um, <clears throat> there, there is other things you can do too. Like, uh, you can use the spiffs web server. That's another good option that lets you upload an, an actual HTML file and it gets served up from the file system. Um, there is advantages of that. It would probably use less memory um, because this is, although it's in its own file, it, it is part of your sketch. It probably gets compiled down to be part of your sketch. So, you know, don't let it fool you that it's, you know, oh, it's in its own file. It's, it's using less memory. It's not. Um, so that would be a negative of it. Uh, but what I do like is it's all part of your sketch. Like if, if you, do the spiffs method. If you upload uh, a sketch that uses the spiffs web server, you then need to like put the web page that you're hosting onto the spiffs website or sorry, web server. So if you've used um, Mac lighting before, you know, that library for controlling NeoPixels, 
like the first step you need to do after you install the sketch is to upload the web page that it uses. So that's why I like this method. Um, because, yeah, it's nice and clean. And yeah, the reason uh, you have to call it motorpage.h, well, it, you can call it whatever, but it needs to be something that the C compiler will consider something that it is interested in. So it has to be .h or dash cpp or, or whatever it, it needs to be something that um, the c compiler recognizes so i just use .h so let's uh this is probably a decent base of a web page um to use because it's pulling in um bootstrap and stuff which is a way of making kind of nice looking websites and it probably has a couple of events that um could be useful to us as well uh, I'll go through as we use them. So um, yeah, to add a new tab up here, uh, I don't think it's uh, super intuitive. So let me just uh, show you. Um, you. Press this button here and you click new tab and then you enter in the name of your file down here. So we'll just call it uh, alarm web dot h okay so that gives us this here and i'm just going to save the new file and i'm going to paste in the thing from my github so yeah as, as per usual i'll be putting this code up on github uh, directly afterwards the link to the github is already in the description but i i, I won't um i won't commit uh, up this code till till after so um yeah, let me know if there's any issues with that. Just uh, looking at the chat, make me boot adds a nice little perk. Yeah, the splash screens uh, are good for this, um, especially with the USP8266, because there's a couple of, you know, states it can be in, like is in boot is, you know, kind of like it's starting up and connecting to the Wi-Fi, you know, uh, like it is a good, kind of indicator to know okay if i never got to the clock it means that the wi-fi hasn't connected so that's a you know a good debugging point or whatever um okay so let's take a look at this html now we do need to refer to this alarm page inside of our sketch and uh, we'll do that in a second now i just want to tidy this up a small bit and get um get something that will like display when we go to it. So uh, yeah, just standard HTML stuff, uh, setting things in the headers, pulling in, <clears throat> excuse me, pulling in uh, the bootstrap uh, CSS just for styling. It's just an easy way of making your web page look pretty nice. Um, let us put in okay so then this container fluid this um this column thing here is uh is just a way of like spacing out your columns a certain amount so there's or spacing out what you have on your html page a certain amount so there's 12 across a screen that's just the it's just the set set values for bootstrap and so if if you want something to be two-thirds of the screen you would set it uh column column size eight and then you know the other thing will take column size four so um you can also make it look different on different screens so xs means uh for a small screen or higher i want it to be that way but like you could have it that on a large screen i want there to be three things across the screen rather than just two so um yeah it's it's well worth looking into um i am not the person to to fully explain it and i don't think this is the time to fully explain it either so uh we'll we'll move on from it but um yeah we can see it we'll probably be able to see later how we use that so i'm just going to get rid of uh most of this stuff at the moment is there anything i need from it Make Ajax call. Yeah, probably. I can go back to it on the GitHub page, anyways. So I'm I'm just gonna do a header for us to uh, read. So uh, alarm clock, and we'll end our H1 tag. 
opened it properly. Um, we are, yeah, we'll probably jQuery min, yeah, we'll use that. So again, that's something that's needed by Bootstrap. Bootstrap JS is obviously needed by Bootstrap. And then we have make Ajax call. So Ajax is something that is is really useful when um, working with web interfaces on uh, working on web interfaces um, using the ESP8266, especially when you're doing this alarm or sorry this uh, string literal um, method or way of doing web pages. So with this one, you can insert values into your web page using you know you can build up a certain amount of the code here oops i should turn that on silent um yeah uh yeah so you can insert values in because you have access to them at this stage but a better way of doing it is actually using ajax calls to go fetch the value of uh of a sensor or whatever um you know, so your web page is static, but it is making calls back to your ESP8266 to just find out, hey, what's the value of that sensor? So, you know, it, rather than you needing to reload the page over and over again to get updated uh, updated um, values for that sensor, it'll make a background request called an AJAX request back to the ESP8266 and pull back just that value. And so it's much lighter overall, and it's a nicer user experience for uh, whoever's on your web page too, because you know it's not constantly reloading the page. So um, yep, we'll be using that AJAX thing for sure. Um, yeah, so let's go back to the Arduino IDE. Uh, we probably won't be using the Ad Event listeners uh, key up or key down there. They were used for um, when I was, uh, yeah, for this this project was building a remote control car with a web interface that you could control or whatever. So, yeah, that is going to be our first version of this page. It doesn't do anything but display alarm clock. So uh, let's get that working. So in order to get it working, we need to pull in a lot of... Um, this is not the right place. We need to pull in. Um, we need to pull in some libraries. Uh, we need to pull in web server. Maybe all of these. I don't know if we need to pull in all of them. So ESP8266 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi client at H, ESP8266 web server, and ESP8266 MDNS. MDNS is. You can set names for your. Um, for your uh, ESP8266 that like, so if I typed in alarm.local, it would appear. It doesn't work on Windows without doing stuff. I think I need to install Bonjour or, some, or something and I've never done it. So uh, I, I never use it. I include it in all, all my projects that use a web server just from a, just from a, I don't know, habit, I guess, but uh, yeah, probably won't be using it this time either. So we already have Wi-Fi included, so I'll just include the other ones. And uh, I'll just put a comment here for web server. Cool. Let me just keep an eye on Twitch. Nobody there. And cool. Right, and let's go on. So again, let's look at what we're doing here. So this is where um, this is where we define that the server should be running on port eighty. All web servers run on port eighty eventually, or at least when you type into your browser, like Google.ie, it's going to port eighty of Google.ie of the address that google.ie resolves as and this is where we're pulling in the um this is where we're pulling in the the web page so we'll, we'll use both of those and we'll also use 
handle root. So we'll pull in all of these actually. Yeah, I'm not sure who mentioned it on the stream the last time, but we were talking about the ESP32 having two cores or whatever. Yeah, like <laughs> as soon as we were finished on that last stream, I started playing around with that. Uh, Andreas Spice has a video on um, on uh, using the two cores, and yeah, it works perfectly. Um, hey, Crocoduck, how's it going? Uh, it works perfectly. Um, I don't know if you saw the the display I had on the Instagram video, but that was actually running uh, on both cores. Um, so it was fetching the data from Instagram on one core and uh, displaying, driving the display on the other core. Uh, so yeah, really, really happy with that. It's uh, With that working well now, I think ESP32 will be involved in a lot more projects I do. I'm still on my AliExpress diet and I only have two ESP32s, so uh, I'll still definitely be using my ESP8266, but um, uh, yeah, it's uh, r really nice. I'm very impressed with it. So uh, the next proper video will, will be on the dual core thing for sure. Um, hoping to make it a two minute tidbit. Hopefully it'll fit okay in that because I haven't done one of those in a while and I know people did like them when I was making them so I'll go back to that uh, okay so I've added in this thing my web page is not called uh, motor page so I'll change it to alarm web um, so we'll call it web page and then handle root is looking after that there um, yeah, I probably should have streamed <laughs> doing that ESP32 stuff. Um, hey, Zandis, how's it going? Um, yeah, that that would have been one for Twitch rather than uh, YouTube. Uh, like, I'm already a small bit concerned about, um, you know, when people come uh, and may maybe make me, you can suggest uh, fixes for this. Like, when people come to my channel at the moment, like, you know, like, if I stream every Monday, which I'm hoping to do, like, like all my previous videos will nearly end up being streams because I, I can't release videos every uh, every week. Um, I'm just not able for that. Uh, hey, Gavin, how's it going? Um, yeah, so like, if I released a video every two weeks, I'd be pretty happy with how it went. Um, so yeah. I don't know whether the channel will look a bit kind of messy or whatever if I uh, have nothing but live streams as the previous video. Well, not nothing but live streams, but, you know, have a lot of live streams. So, yeah, I don't know. So the more kind of random streams I would just do using uh, Twitch, um, especially if I don't know where they're going or if I'm going to get something out of it or what the story is if I'm just kind of randomly working on things. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I've just added uh, a page for 404s. Um, it's just basically displays, couldn't find it or whatever. But um, I also always like adding this example because it uses, uh, it shows me how to get out the arguments, which I can never remember how to do. So I always bring that example around with me in case we need to pull out some arguments um so okay here's the setup um and it does this uh what does it do so it connects to the wi-fi blah 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 blah, blah mds.begin uh wi-fi care and then it's meant to respond to wi-fi care um Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. I was actually looking at some of Louis' stuff uh, recently enough. H his regular videos are almost like streams as well. Like I was looking at one today, and it was like fifty minutes long or something, and it wasn't a stream. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's kind of a, it's it's a little bit weird for me. Like if I'm aiming, like some of my videos, I'm aiming for them to be two minutes long. 
and then in between them there's like two or three hour and a half long streams i think uh i i think as well that like i, I really need to limit the streams to be definitely no more than an hour and a half really i should be aiming for about an hour i think um just because you know people start to lose attention after an hour i'd imagine um yeah uh, i think i think you're right um ideally i wouldn't like to be 100 percent streaming i do like it a lot and i love not editing videos it's so nice but um yeah i pro i, I don't know i don't feel like it's uh I don't know. I don't feel like it's my best work, really. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, like I can be happy with how a stream went uh, and things like that, but uh, um, I can be happy with how a stream went or whatever. But I, I don't know. Like, as in, if I was really happy with a video I did, I'd be like super proud of it. I don't think I'd be too proud of a stream. Although I was, uh, I've been very happy after the last couple of streams just because of, uh, uh, just because of, yeah, to, like I've streamed a few times for the last, uh, you know, over the last six months or whatever, but uh, it's, it's a lot more enjoyable streaming when there's people on <laughs> to talk to. Uh, yeah, make me the new algorithm 100% uh, credits people for like watch time so st like streams are streams are massive to that like as in I said the zelda chest video was watched a few thousand times or whatever but the post bag video which was a stream has way more watch minutes on it so like and i i can see it being recommended by youtube more and more like so um yeah which is it's kind of weird um yeah no I, i'd agree with that like um I, I think that's another thing as well that like streaming will if, if people are fans of your stuff already you know they, they might enjoy streams i can't see like too many people kind of going like coming across an hour and a half long video and be like oh cool i better check out this guy i've never seen him before um so yeah, I think you probably do need to maintain a mix of both. Um, but uh, yeah, as mentioned, like I do really enjoy doing the streams from a perspective um, of uh, of like not having to edit, just do it for an hour and a half, and it's done. And like it's cool to get to interact with you guys. I do find myself getting distracted uh, a lot from actually doing the project, like right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's it's all good fun, but uh, yeah. Uh, and what we said, mailbag videos are, yeah, I, like I don't, I can kind of nearly not understand that the mailbag video is just doing so well, and I'm like, what? <laughs> it's an hour and forty five minutes long or something like, uh, oh, well. um, I I don't have that much stuff, uh. Like, I do have a backlog of stuff ordered, but uh, so far it's only two packages, so it'd be a pretty terrible mailbag. Um, okay, so I think we have most things here. The The last thing I need to do is inside the... So this is one thing I mentioned or forgot the last time I was doing a project with a server is server.begin. So that just tells it to start up the server. And then also in the loop, you need to handle the the server so that's you know if, if you don't call that or if it's called with a delay or whatever you know the request from the user's browser will hit the ESP8266 but won't get served until this is done so you you definitely want to be doing that as often as possible um, so I've seen it before in uh, so this is going to be a problem um but we'll we'll fix that um i've seen it before in um projects where you know the, say someone was controlling um controlling leds like uh with it um uh, with with a web interface that like if part of their you know you click this button it does that if part of that called off uh you know 
uh, like a function that had delays in it or whatever they were like okay when I press that button like it doesn't come back you know the next web page doesn't reload for ages afterwards that's because um, you need to not be doing delays yeah back to the codes um, okay so yeah where am I let's just I'll throw this in here and then I'll fix the the, the delay thing um okay where are we loop okay so handle server so this is um we're just going to need to do the like i'm sure you've seen it before um especially if you're familiar with it but um if you go to the basic examples and look at it's not the basic examples oh it's okay it's in digital uh blink without delay um so we're going to be doing the same thing here. So it basically, like the standard blink sketch uses uh, delay to get the time in between the LED blinking. But um, what the blink without delay thing does is uh, millis returns back the amount of milliseconds that your Arduino has been up. So what you can do is you can take the millis now and then add on how much of a delay you want to do and then keep comparing the millis against that and while it's still lower the timer hasn't expired and when it's higher it has and then you know you do it again so yep that's a good way of not doing a delay so we have a second delay here that is currently affecting the entire loop but what we're going to do is we're going to put just this stuff inside of our new delay um, that we are going to do using millis. So um, I'll just put it here. So it's an unsigned int is what millis returns. Uh, and we'll say, I don't know, um, uh, one second loop. And we'll default that to zero. It probably defaults to zero anyways. Um, so what we're going to do is oh sorry one second loop ju um and we are also going to have another one here unsigned int again and uh, this probably doesn't need to be unsigned uh, it doesn't matter um delay time no, I, i'll leave that out for the moment actually so what we're going to do is uh, unsigned int equal now now equals millis. So that's taken the current time. What we're going to do then is if now is greater than one second loop due. Uh, we will put all this stuff in here. I think you could be right. It is an unsigned long. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Zendis. Um, yeah, so now we've that stuff in here. And then the important thing that we need to add to this is we now need to say one second loop ju is equal to now plus whatever we want our delay to be so we'll say a thousand milliseconds so um so if we run through this kind of in our head first time so if one second loop ju is zero uh the first time millis will get down to here it's already connected to the wi-fi and stuff so it's going to be greater than zero so now is going to be greater than zero so let's just say it's it's 500 so 500 is greater than zero so it gets in here and then when it gets down here it's gonna say okay 500 plus a thousand is when the new one is two so say we get back here again and now millis returns 600 so it took 100 milliseconds to get back here again uh it's going to compare 600 against uh 1500 and you know it's going to be less so it'll keep going again until it reaches that time uh, hey Jeffrey, how's it going? Uh, wanted what is it for your responses on the crypto clock? Uh, no, uh, 
problem. I I don't fully remember <laughs> what I responded on the crypto clock, but you're welcome. Uh, thanks for coming along and saying uh, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I've, uh, I, on the Instagram video, Michael, I don't know if he's still on, and it's a bit late for people in Germany. Um, on the Instagram video, Michael posted a really cool video of a clock that he made before, um, where instead of the text scrolling from left to right on the display, on one of these displays, so instead of it scrolling left to right or whatever, it uh, changed it changed the digits up words uh, which I thought was really nice and I was thinking maybe it would make a nice uh, counter of some description for cryptocurrencies or whatever he sent on a video of uh, the code he based it on so um, I'll definitely take a look into that at some stage um, I, I really like those dot matrix um, or LED matrix displays um, there was the issue that they needed uh, hey Michael good to see you're still on it's getting kind of late though. Um, uh, there was the issue of you needing a free core to drive them, or you know that uh, you couldn't go fetching data while uh, while you were driving these. But um, yeah, with the ESP32, that's not an issue anymore. So very nice. Okay, cool. So that should look after this for us. I think that has explained the loop without delay. Okay, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. But we'll. Uh, so that should cover us. We're, so we're handling a uh, client every time we get into the loop, but we'll only do this stuff when one second loop due is less than uh, millis. So uh, cool. Let us upload. Am I? No, so I have uh, my ESP32 board selected. I, I really wish you could, um, in the board manager or whatever, that you could. Um, get rid of some of them like when I want to select the like this is the only ESP32 board I use and I have to scroll through tons of boards that I don't use to get down to it and it's just like why like isn't I don't have a lily pad I don't have all of these things can I not just like star the ones I want or yeah doesn't matter um another another win for um Another win for platform I owe. Uh, yeah, so hopefully this works okay. All we're gonna see is a title if uh, if it worked alright. So while we're waiting for that to upload, I suppose it's probably worth taking a look at um, HTML5 time input. So. Uh, yeah, so see here, like you know, if if I want to set an alarm, it would make sense that I use um, like a time input box. So so it, it's an input of type equals time, and then you know that's that's the only bit of code that is making this, and this is giving me a nice like clock with probably can't set 70 minutes you know it's uh i can even do this stuff i can unset it like that's all super nice and all i did was do input time equals time that's that's pretty cool so we'll definitely be using that in our um in our uh, project um it probably like eventually i would like it to be more like your phone in terms of like you set a time and then you say I want this to run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday or whatever but we'll get the basic one working and then we'll uh, build on it from there yeah um, cool I actually had somebody email me um, during the week to ask could he have permission to sell the the, the um, cryptocurrency displays um so like the library that i've written is uh it's lgpl or something which is 100 percent fine from a oops it restarted oh yeah that makes sense um which is 100 percent fine from uh uh like selling it on point of view i think he 
needs to make any changes he makes to it available or something nothing major uh, I didn't actually have um, I didn't actually have a license on the sketch but um, I told him to uh, fire ahead with it it is something that I'd be interested in doing at some stage I haven't just figured out what the right project for it is though uh, in terms of you know kind of having a quick run of something um, I don't know if you've seen it recently um, Sean Hodgins who has a YouTube channel he's after releasing a, a new Kickstarter called the Pico Pixel, I want to call it. It's like a, it's a matrix of they're not Neo Pixels, they're are they dot matrix dots dot stars or something like that, but they're tiny. Uh, so it's a, a like a seven point five centimeter by seven point five centimeter square board and like it's super nice looking and you know yeah i just haven't found what i want to do along those lines and also he has a good bit of experience with board design i have none i've made one uh design in KiCad, and i haven't uh haven't even got it gotten it gotten it gotten it made yet so uh start small i suppose and then uh, work our way work our way up um okay so that's done uploading uh let's did i print out i'm gonna make this beep again i'm gonna just cover my uh... i don't seem to be printing out the the ip address of this thing which would be uh useful in this scenario um, unlike me to not print it out so let's grab it from here and print it out so I can actually tell what uh, what board we're on Wi-Fi here let's call it another room not that it matters because I won't be using it uh, Eric Wertz I thought there is a search function to filter in just what you want is there? Uh, doesn't seem to be there. Oops. Oh no, you get to see my name. Um yeah i would be interested in hearing if that is a thing if uh if you can provide any more details on it eric because that like i use like four boards five maybe and like it's <laughs> super annoying to have to scroll through them all uh okay let's see com three Ooh, it's listening on 192 .168.1.2 Alarm clock. Ooh. Okay, so let's add our input type and see. Um, yeah, that's the search field. Is that not just for searching to install boards? I don't think it's for like filtering out the ones that appear in the drop down like i know if i if i added like the esp8266 json to the uh preferences that that's how i would install it as i'd search for esp8266 but I don't, I don't think it filters out anything you know on the in the boards drop down i'm open to correction i was actually wrong about something else today too it does happen um uh, so telegrams uh, documentation like one of the first things it says is all requests must be made using HTTPS and some person on github was like oh I want to use this on my Ethernet shield and I was like you can't it doesn't support HTTPS and he was like you don't need HTTPS and I was like yes you do <laughs> and he was like no you don't 
and I uh, did a test query and he was right even though it says you need it you do not need it so that was weird um but nice at the same time so okay alarm clock set your alarm right so yeah cool this should be us uh, let us do, uh, I guess I could add a button here. Bring me back my buttons from earlier. Um, I should never have gotten rid of them. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to add a button underneath that. Actually, I'll probably add rows for these things too. Why not? Um, I'll add a button underneath that can just type in, or I can just send the okay, I have one too many divs height. I don't need that. Probably don't need padding on it either. But center line text button. Um, what am I doing here? Maybe I won't do a button actually. Uh, I should be able to just do um, on change. Let's see. Let's bring you in. <laughs> so I'm not just typing to myself. Uh, what is this? This is an input time on change. Let's see what it says. It's possible to detect on change. That, yeah, that might work actually, Gavin, if I delete the ones that I don't need. Um, yeah, that could work. Um, Document get element by ID. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of these really work for me because I think this is going to alert any time I change rather than uh, uh, rather than like when I'm finished changing it. So, yep. <laughs> back to the buttons. Bring me back button. Okay, so I'm just going to make a new um, JavaScript method called uh, save alarm. And it's not going to pass in anything. Uh, and it's not going to be on mouse down. It's going to be on click. Um, click. Uh, yeah, I needed to use the touch buttons for the um, for the for the car because I needed to be when it was pressed. I wanted it to drive, and when I let go, when I let go, I wanted it to send stop driving the motors. Excuse me. Um, Okay, so button ID is oh, send alarm. Uh, send alarm. Okie dokie. Uh, script, 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 script. Don't need you, script, but I do need a new script. Uh, I don't really need a new one, but I'll do it. Fun I can't type. Um, Yeah, um, yeah, it's good to good to know that works. Uh, I must uh, I must do that. Um, delete some of them out of there. No, it's not on click. It's a uh, save alarm. Gosh, I'm terrible at uh, JavaScript, but we'll do what we can. Um, 
I should be better at it, but I'm really not. Uh, okay, so I need to reference the ID. So what is it? It's jQuery. I hate uh, jQuery. Get element by ID. So it is. Oh yes. So dollar start my div and I mine is called time and it should be value. Okay, so let's do ver uh, uh sorry, alarm time equals that. If alarm time is true, then we want to make an Ajax call. Our URL is going to be set alarm. We're going to have to pass in an alarm. I wonder how this is going to be set set if it's going to be a string or what. Let's find out, I suppose. Let's add a console log here. So this will get printed out on our console of our browser. Uh, set alarm equals. So set alarm is going to be like the web page that we're going to hit. So we have to make a new endpoint for that on our web server. And then the question mark says anything after this is uh, a list of parameters. So alarm equals whatever alarm time is. And then like if you wanted any, oh, I'm doing this wrong, but uh, if you wanted any additional parameters, then they would be separated by an ampersand or the and sign. So, uh, and that's calling this function here, make Ajax call, which is a really useful one. Um, you know, what I was saying, this will make a background request, uh, so it won't lock up the user's browser or anything like that. So super useful. Uh, yeah, so that sh should give us a button now that when we click save alarm, it'll call this stuff. I'm Mr. Geek Gamer is trying to build an ESP8266 programmer shield. Um, yeah, I've never done it. Uh, I've mentioned a few times. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the ESP zero ones, even though for some reason, and I I don't understand why. Like the video for me that does the best based on search terms is definitely that one, and I've no idea why. I would like I wouldn't count it a great video at all, but uh, yeah. And when I was using the ESP zero ones, I, I bought that programmer off AliExpress. Uh, looking is, is not cheating. ESP zero one, uh, ESP programmer. Um, yes one of these things like you know they're one dollar 32 I, I know like some of the fun of building a program in shield isn't just buying a cheap one from china or whatever um it like yeah it is cheaper to get started with but <clears throat> excuse me like i i think there's about a dollar in the difference between a, a wemos d1 mini and <clears throat> excuse me probably need to get a drink of water um there's probably a dollar in the difference between a Wemos d1 mini and uh i don't know if that's the problem no uh, uh a fake Wemos d1 mini and uh zero one um so th there isn't a lot in it I'm, I'm surprised i'm not finding more of these i'm obviously searching for it wrong um Weirdly though, all of these need to be modified to connect ground or GPIO pin zero to ground, uh, which is super weird. Um, I don't think he's on the chat now, but um, 
Stephen Ludgate does a lot of uh, mailbag videos, and he he got one that had a button built in, but I just added a button to the back of it, and it worked fine. But like, yeah, like an ESP ESP zero one. I don't know if that's the correct thing to search for. Like one seventy three is is pretty typical, but then a Wemos D one mini, which you know has a programmer built in, you can get for two sixty nine. So you know there's a dollar in between it, and this one is just a lot, uh, a lot. Oops, a lot less hassle, I would say. You know, and it has more pins broken out and, and, and things like that. So, um, my recommendation, if you're just getting started out, would be uh, this guy. There's actually a link to one of these in the description, but uh, yeah, you can just get them anywhere on AliExpress. Like, I've bought a ton of these, like the fake Wemos D1 minis. Like, oh, yeah, at least 30, and uh, they've all been fine for me. No, when I say at least 30, that's wrong. Probably 20 for sure. At like at least 20 uh probably more <laughs> so yeah let's see how this went for us so that looks nice so let's say i wanted an alarm well it's not doing anything at the moment i don't even have that endpoint set up so it's actually going to uh throw an error in the console uh would be a good thing yes we did see an error in the console save uh, not the error i was expecting save alarm is not defined so if i look at this i have save alarm Funk. ah yes i blame all of us for this <laughs> i misspelled function um Uh, yeah, there there is one with, yeah, as Michael said, there is one with a switch on it, but I don't know why I couldn't find it there. Um, Logan, Ludgate, YouTube. Let's, uh, while we're, I'm just uploading that again. Um, so while it's compiling, yes, here. Uh, his wife's handiwork there. Um, thank you for the beep. Uh, I will even post in the description Stephen's affiliate link because he did the hard work. So yeah, there's a switch built into it, but it's a bit more expensive too, though. But uh, Depends on how much you value your time of uh, of uh, soldering. So, oof, that's a horrible link. Um, can I not get Stephen's link? I know, I know what I can do. I can do that. Okay. You're welcome, Stephen. If somebody buys it through that link and gets you. A two cents or whatever it is uh actually aliexpress's affiliate program is pretty good it's um it is eight percent which is quite high their stuff is so cheap that uh you need a lot of eight percents to uh build up something with it um but uh can't complain save alarm is not defined oh maybe i didn't reload the page did i Function is there. Save alarm. Save alarm. Yeah, should be fine. I think maybe I just haven't reloaded the page. No. Save alarm is still not defined. What is wrong with that? Funk. On. Oh, my script tag is in a weird position. 
What am I doing here? Ah, yes, yeah, so I'm not ending my script tag, and the browser is ending it for me in a weird spot. Oops. I blame all of us again. Uh, you know. Yeah, but um, I I generally just tend to use the the Wemos D1 Minis, which is the one on my desk right now. Uh, yes, that is a good point. Um, I think the problem was my lack of end of script tag. Thank you. Uh, that looks, yeah, that looks a bit better now. So let's, uh, oops, uh, 50. Okay, so it's sent alarm there. Uh, no errors on the console. I don't see anything in the console. That... Oh, uh, I'm guessing this is failing. Uh, did I do that right? The jQuery part of it? Uh, ID select slash my div. Well, oh, maybe I shouldn't be using value. Uh, jQuery input value. Ah, it's that val. Oops. And we'll go again. And this I could definitely run on the console of the browser. Where are we? Okay. Yeah, so that actually returned a string as well, which is probably pretty good. Um we can uh we can pretty easily turn that into something uh turn that into something that we can use on, on the other side, on the Arduino side. Um, okay. Cool, so if I reload this now. 50. Okay, yeah, so it didn't find this URL, which isn't surprising. The other thing that might be an issue is this colon isn't uh, is probably needs to be encoded. Um, yeah, I, d I doubt. Maybe that works okay. Maybe it's already getting encoded. We can try it without it. We'll we'll see what happens. So I, I need to make a set alarm endpoint, and I don't have one at the moment. So let's do that. Um, okay, so if we go back to our example, go to the INO, I'll show you what I mean by endpoints. So you can see here, we already, this is in our code here, this slash handle root. So that's the root of the web server. So, you know, without anything else on the end of it, 192.168.1.2 will bring you to handle root, which is a method up here that just basically serves up the web page that's in our that's in our header file. But now we want to do something like this, which is um, which is at this endpoint I want to do something. Now what I might actually do is I should have examples of um, code that has used um has parsed out uh parsed out a value from it as well um so that might be worth doing router info parser isn't it crypto display isn't it wi-fi control care where are we one of these guys will do it first uh, Kitchen counter lights, I think, is one. This is one I did on a stream as well. Um, 
I still haven't put them, uh, sorry, I've put the lights up under my counter, but I haven't soldered up the Arduino part of it, so I'm just using the lights as a dumb plug in the power supply thing. So uh, here is, so this handle brightness method is, uh, you can see here the, uh, can't see the code highlights because the camera's, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off that. Thank you, Drew. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so handle brightness is um, it comes in here. It steps through all the different arguments that were passed, and with the one that's called level, it takes out the value of that. We won't be able to do two int of it. I'm not sure what we can do instead. Uh, we'll find out. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. What's the problem with streaming? Um, okay, so back to alarm clock. Drew is on the ball though, on the case. Uh, this is a method. Handle brightness. So this is going to be handle set alarm. Setting alarm. What did I call it when I'm setting the alarm? Alarm. Setting alarm to Do I want to? I suppose at this stage, it'd probably be best off saving it as hours and minutes. Yeah, why not? Um, okay, so up here, I am going to make maybe up here. Code is all over the place. Int uh, alarm hour. Oops. Hour. Uh, just make it zero to begin with. That's also a problem that will need to be tidied up. I'm making a list of things to be tidied up later because at 12 o'clock this will uh, go off. <laughs> um, okay, so. What I need to do is not to int it, anyways. Yeah, so it comes back as a string. So to int is a method on the string class. So we just need to not to string it. So I'm going to make this a string and it is alarm. So what I want to do here is time to look up my Arduino string. Methods. This is not the page I'm looking for. This is the same page that I was already on. Uh, I have to change the ish functions. This isn't really the page I was thinking about, but if it works, it works. Yeah, they used to have a page where everything was over on the right. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Um, okay, so if I get the index of, that will give me where my colon is. Uh, string alarm, right? So if we get int index of colon, alarm dot index of colon. Now, if we go back to our Arduino string reference, if we get substring, 
get a substring of string. The starting index is inclusive and then the ending index is omitted. So if I wanted to get 10 colon, if I just wanted to get the 10 out of 10 colon 10, it would be, sorry, if 10 colon 20, we'll say, uh, I would pass in from 0 to the colon index, and it's not inclusive of the colon index, so that should be good. Hey, Carl, how is it going? And hey, Drew, you snuck in there too. Uh, I know it's probably pretty early. Uh, for your handling the millies rollover, which occurs after 40 days, that is, uh, that's true. Um, so what Michael's referring to there is millies, the number gets so big after 40 days that it goes back to zero again. So if you have a scenario where, uh, if you have a scenario where you're only checking, am I greater than millies, or sorry, is millies greater than a certain number? When it rolls back, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, I think a check like something pretty simple, like, am I, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what you do with that. If subtraction in the if statement. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I'm not sure. We'll worry about that in 40 days time. <laughs> um, Jack Sat is talking about the in boards thing, uh, which is great. Thanks, Jack. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that after the after the stream. So what am I doing here? Index of. Okay, yeah, so I want to get string that sub index from zero to index of colon. And so this is going to return me a string. And what I want to do with this is to int it straight away and save it in my alarm hours or whatever it was called. Alarm hour. Um, and now Uh, alarm minute alarm substring so I think it's going to be index of colon plus one without any end index should give me to the end so it was inclusive um, that would be great Michael because that person is obviously smarter than I am um yeah so it's inclusive of the first one so we don't want it to be index of colon uh because that would get the colon as well which we don't want so uh yeah hopefully this covers it uh alarm hour println i know i could uh add these together but i'm just gonna do it this way instead so, um, lazy. I don't know if this is lazier than doing it normally. Uh, I still haven't actually told it to handle the alarm when it gets to a certain one. So th even though uh, uh, even though um, the browser doesn't isn't doing anything with this response we need to actually respond to it or the browser will stop sending requests um it like it doesn't consider it a finished like request until it gets something back so it will actually just stop responding the the browser will stop trying to send things if it sees like hey it didn't respond to the last 10 ones of these there's something wrong so you need to respond with something um so yep uh, so I'm just responding with set alarm. Okie dokie, so that should be okay. Now we need to make sure we, um, we need to make sure that we do this server on stuff. 
uh, where are we? Handle root, handle brightness, blah 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 blah, and setup. Yes, so this is what we need to do in our code. So if we go down to the end of our setup, where is our setup? Here. Let me do it here. So it's not brightness that I want to do, it is set alarm. And it is handled set alarm. So hopefully that works for us. Now I haven't done anything to actually make the alarm go off. So let's uh, see how it goes. Mm. I might need to turn that off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I can fit everything. I, I could get rid of me if that was an option. So, I, like, it's hard to fit the chat and the board in. There, you don't need to see my shoulder. Um. Okay, so let's load up our web page. Check, does it work this time? So, I'll set eight. 50 because I'm lazy okay so it worked that time because this isn't red um, so it responded with set alarm which is what we want so hopefully I have yeah so it's set alarm to 8 colon 50 so n now we need to make it go off and I think that would be a nice place to end the stream if we get that working um okay so we need to okay I'm just gonna add a boolean for alarm handled alarm Carol you're you're mad for me to do some soldering on a live stream. I uh, I gave the I gave the <clears throat> this the kit that I got the last day to <clears throat> excuse me to my uh, brother. Uh, he's just learning how to solder at the moment. Um, I should have more coming, and uh, they some of them will be duplicates, and I might do uh, one of them on a live stream or whatever. Um, I have done some soldering on live streams before. It's kind of hard to do, like obvious. Sorry, I I can solder on the live stream. That's not a problem. Uh, it's the it is the fact that um, it's it's hard to get like a good picture of it or whatever. You know, it's uh, it's not. Um, I don't know if it's overly interesting in seeing. Um, yeah. uh, friends of mine were saying that it might be interesting in terms of like kind of showing people how to solder, but I'm not a, uh, I'm not the best at it, so maybe not the best person to do. Hey, Sil, how's it going? Uh, Sil is on Twitch. Everybody else is on YouTube. Sil, I don't know what's uh, uh, what's the story? The sweater, just the Twitch. I'm not bringing in that Twitch crowd anymore. Um, Sil, I think was it you that I saw posted a comment on um, on uh, Imager or something on was it the guitar effects pedal that we did the stream on before? Um, yeah, <laughs> I was just checking that post at one stage, and Sil was like, "Hey, were you on Twitch? I I seen you do this." I was like, "Yeah, that was me." <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. Where am I? So, okay, I want to make a new method, I guess, called check for alarm. Do I want to make this void? No, I'll make this the boolean. Uh, check for alarm. Uh, yeah, so so you probably don't get all the, the benefits of... Um, the description on YouTube. So I'm making an alarm clock out of an ESP8266, which you already know all about. 
and yeah so I'm just uh I'm just going by it piece by piece so like in the first stream like we got the time from an NTP server and displayed it on the seven segment display and now what I'm doing is just building the web page to set the alarm so the web page is done it's sending it back to the ESP8266 the value that's in this uh this uh input box so now like just to finish up I'm going to check for an alarm and or check you know continuously check is the alarm due to go off and when it is I'm just going to beep this little buzzer down here um okay I need to make sure that I'm not covering anything when I'm typing so check for an alarm um so it would probably be useful if I made these public or global um, and, um, um, yeah I'll probably will add an RTC uh, to it column in the parameter value the 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 colon in, yeah I probably should but um I don't know it seems to be working okay so I'm gonna leave it for the moment but yeah so if you're having problems with your parameters going back or whatever you should be URL encoding um you can just like in JavaScript there is like URL dot encode or something just if you search for it and then when you receive it in the JavaScript side it will then be a percentage tree A as Xandas mentions here so you'd want to either replace the percentage tree A with the colon again or uh, just use that percentage tree A in the index of and uh, offset by the amount it is or whatever when you're pulling out the second part of it but because it's working I'm just gonna leave it for this stream because I'm pretty tired um, yeah so yeah that's interesting mine will be plugged in I'm I'm actually hoping to use it as my main alarm eventually um, like I, I'd like to be able to do stuff like um, set the alarm through telegram and, and, and things like that um, I thought that'd be pretty nice like if you were in work and you're like oh I have an early meeting in the morning I'll just set that alarm now so you could text it from there and you could also do kind of weird enough things like you could give like someone power to ring your alarm so say like my wife is trying to get in touch with me but my phone isn't working or whatever that like she could set the alarm off uh you know using telegram um from wherever in the world so yeah battery isn't a concern probably will use add the rtc especially if i'm using it as my main uh, work alarm clock so let me get rid of these so i'm changing these from local variables to uh, global variables um so uh, i can use them in my check for alarm so what i want to do here is so if our is equal to what is it alarm hour if hour is equal to alarm hour and minute is equal equal to alarm minute so now we know that we're meant to be setting off the alarm at this stage so I'm just gonna call sound alarm I'm gonna take it out of the out of the um, setup now as well so sound the alarm is just gonna set this thing off for a second and then turn it off again because I don't have a way of turning it off at the moment so I'll just add a button or, or whatever at some stage um, okay uh, the reason I added this alarm handled is because after I sound the alarm I'm going to set alarm handled to be true um, if alarm handled is false I will sound the alarm and 
set alarm handled equals true and then outside of all of this I will else I could do an if to check if um, I could do an if to check is alarm handled true and then set it to false but it would probably be as much thank you so it would probably be as much work for the uh it would probably be as much work for the arduino to um check if it's true than to just set it to false you know it's it's one clock processing tick probably to set it to false while if you were checking is it false and then if it's not set it to false that would be two so uh no point i think just setting it to false all the time will work i can also um there's no point checking it every uh i, I may as well check it inside the one second loop because you know it's not that time critical that it needs to be checking every millisecond or whatever so checking every one second is it the alarm is going to be fine um and i'll also do it after this display time which is setting this hour and minutes it's kind of overloading that method but we'll see how we get on so let's upload this and see how it goes um yeah how did uh had you given your secret santa the um minutes had you given your um secret santa the the guns from um overwatch that time still or were you just working on them i remember you mentioned that you 3d printed some for your secret santa these kind of optimizations are best done by the compiler um are they but the compiler won't know that it's always false so it wouldn't optimize it down to anything, I would say. Uh, oh, I've done saving. <laughs> Check if it's true and turn itself off 30 seconds later. The sound alarm is, is only going to sound for one second at the moment. And then, you know, it, it won't do, it won't sound again until the following uh the following day or whenever the alarm is due to go off next so it should be okay dogs haven't complained about the alarm so far um okay so do we want to take bets overwatch is boring i i enjoyed overwatch i don't play it as much as i did but i man i loved myself some reinhardt uh yeah, so, okay, if I set this to be 23.11, okay, I've sent 23.11, it has set the alarm to 23.11, it's 23.10 now, so we taking bets whether this will work in uh, a minute's time. I, let me just, <laughs> let me look at the code again. Um, no, you know, I put it in check for alarm here. Uh, check for alarm. If hour equals alarm hour and minutes equals alarm minutes, then an alarm is not handled, which it is not by default and it also gets set over and over again here, it should sound the alarm. I, I think it'll work. Let's find out. Sandus is betting that the sound will work. Thanks, Sandus. <laughs> Woo! My uh, alarm handled code isn't working. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Oops. Uh, okay, the sound will work. Um, so the problem with this is uh, 
that is the problem with this. It's setting alarmed handle to be false all the time, uh, even when the alarm is is like goes off. So uh, that should uh, should fix it. Shut up. It's only compiling the sketch at the moment, so it's not a. Uh... The old sketch is still running on it. Okay. No, come on. Upload. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... The alarm will check for the entire 60 seconds of the minute. No. It... Y yeah, it will keep checking every second within the 60 seconds. But what was... So, I added this code to to cool down the alarm basically so that when it wasn't handled the first time it should come in here and sound the alarm and then alarm handled equals true which means the next time it should happen this should make it not pass uh, and but I had a logic flaw where I was setting alarm handled equals false at the end of this method regardless of whether it got in here or not which was wrong I needed to be else if it didn't get in here alarm handled equals false because I don't want to set alarm handled equals false when this is true um, it's kind of temporary anyways because it'll eventually be replaced with um oops one four quick 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 it'll eventually be replaced with um you know a button to be this alarm handled or something to be alarm handled so yeah okay if this works well uh, either way i'll probably be finishing up here um thanks a lot for the company on the stream guys i'm gonna try stream every monday uh, around this time so at 9 30 irish time or 10 30 central european time and some other version of time in uh, in other places um yeah so same yeah worked properly that time uh so yeah so same time uh, next week hopefully we'll get a bit more done um if you want to leave any comments or whatever about what um what you think the next features should be i'll be all ears i think a button to turn off the alarm would probably be pretty useful and uh, then maybe we might do something fun like setting an alarm from telegram or something fun like that and maybe we could add a snooze button that if i click it it posts to my twitter to say that i'm super lazy that might be another fun one okay uh, thanks a lot i'll stay around the chats for uh um <laughs> I'll stay around in the chats for a few minutes anyways. Uh thanks a lot. Uh okay.